Welcome, bienvenue. To Chef Le, Alain Le Notre invites you to make a lemon meringue tart. My name is Renee Ketchum, and I help curate many of the cultural offerings of AFUSA. AFUSA is the largest Alliance Francaise network in the world, helping 25,000 learners of French every year learn French, live French, and love French. Look at the map of all the Alliance Francaise in the United States with the Alliance. We have a few wonderful national events coming up soon. Picasso the Foreigner this week, April in Paris with Oliver G, even more secrets of mastering French. One film, one federation for Earth Day, which should be fabulous with an interview with the director and Le Métro Insolite with Charles Coulon. Visit your local chapter of AFUSA.org to register and for more information. A few logistics. Today's presentation will be in, in English and in French. Please stay on mute during the presentation. Stay on speaker view. All questions should be put in the chat. And if you have technical issues, please sign back in after a few minutes using the original Zoom link. This event is being recorded for our YouTube channel and we'll have a runtime of one hour. So welcome Chef Le Notre. Chef Le Notre, Chef Alain Le Notre is the third, third generation chef of the Le Notre family. He is the founder of the Culinary Institute Le Notre in Houston, Texas, ranked number one of the culinary art colleges in the United States for three years in a row by niche.com. In 2021, Chef Le Notre contributed to the English translation and republishing of Fête Votre Pâtisserie comme Le Notre, in English, French Pastries and Desserts by Le Notre. So welcome again, Chef Le Notre. Merci de m'accueillir, René et Isabelle. Et Melissa. Chef Le Notre, we have two questions for you today that we would love for you to share with our audience. Firstly, could you share with us about the exceptional lives of your grandparents on both sides of the family? I admire my grandparents very much, my late grandparents. Uh, I named my son after Gaston Lenot, my father, but also Gaston Lenot, my grandfather. They were exceptionals, and especially my grandmother, she was uh, Eleonore. She was a head chef for the Rothschild family in their chateau in Paris and in Bordeaux. And at that, at that time, in the 1900, there was no woman chef. They did not exist. And I don't know the details how she arrived at that position. What I know that for me, she looked very much like Stéphane Audran in the film, Le Festin de Babette, yes. Babette Fist. And uh, I encourage the members of uh, the audience of watch again Babette Fist, Le Festin de Babette, because it's for me the best movie on, on the topic of uh, cuisine ever, Le Festin de Babette. And they, I go to the second part of your question. They, they met in Paris by accident, and they found that they were from the same town of Bernay in, in uh, Eur, in Normandy. And they did not know that they were both chefs and both coming from the same town. So that was love at the first sight, I suppose. My grandfather was head chef at the Grand Hotel next to uh, the opera. At that time, the ventilation in the kitchen was horrible. It was just natural ventilation. There was no air conditioning and no mechanical. Man. And uh, when 
and uh, soon, enough, soon enough he had uh, the beginning of a uh, cancer and uh, uh, he had respiration problem and the doctor told him go back to your Normandy immediately or you will not survive. So they both went back to Normandy. They bought a little farm there and um, where my father and my uncle were born and where I spent uh, part of my uh, young children vacation. And I, uh, I still uh, remember harvesting the apples and uh, to make cider and uh, feeding the chicken and the uh, piglet. That was a long time ago. It's all I can say about Gaston Lenoir and, and Oh yes, Gaston. Lenoir. So when he went back, he was told by the the doctor no heavy work. So he, he was doing nothing in the farm. He just volunteered to be a mayor of that little village. He stayed mayor at least twenty five years, doing nothing else. <laughs> so that was a little village of two hundred fifty people, uh, but he was. He was nice with it, so nice with everybody. I have a few pictures left of him. So all the work was done by my grandmother, and there was a lot of work. So because she was doing her cheese. Oh yes, my grandfather was selling the cheese in Bernay, carrying the cheese with the horses and cart, and on market day selling the cheese, which was not heavy work really. Certainly not because for him that was a pleasure because he had a girlfriend in Bern. <laughs> Did I answer the question? I hope so. Melissa, I think we have answers to both questions, correct? Yes. And are we now ready for the, for the, the, the video? At Culinary Institute Lenault, we create. We create a higher level of excellence. Unstoppable potential. We create innovation built on tradition. Opportunity at every step. We create environments for our students to succeed. To live out their dreams. Born of a legacy of excellence. We are creating the culinary masters of tomorrow. See what you create at Culinary Institute Le Nôtre. I joined uh, Le Nôtre so I can perfection some techniques and learn from the best. It's really exciting to learn from chefs that give you every single ounce of knowledge that they have. I've been doing this for a long time. Just show them, you know, the way it's going to be in the industry. They truly care about each and every student. He's going to hold me to his standard. That actually helped me later in life. I love being able to come to school every day knowing that I'll be challenged in an actual kitchen environment. I was able to gain so much knowledge, technique, and skill. It really helped me and helped me grow as a chef. Quality training gets you excellent chefs. Actually, uh, a lot of my dreams have already come true, thanks to Culinary Institute Lenote. The number one in America. Today, les Amis de la France, we are going to do together the Italian meringue tarte, lemon tarte.
page 250 in Fedbot Patisserie comme le nôtre. Equipment. One baking sheet, pastry bag and piping tip, 8 inch diameter baking ring, parchment paper, dry beans, a thermometer, an immersion blender, one spatula, one whisk, one saucepan, a standing mixer, a mixing bowl with a whisk attachment. Ingredients. The tart shell is made with 300 grams of sweet short cross pastry dough, page 41, plus one egg yolk to be lightly beaten. The lemon cream requires two sheets of gelatin, the juice of four lemons, approximately 100 milligrams, 165 grams of sugar, 90 grams of eggs, 120 grams of butter diced. For the Italian meringue, you will need 75 grams of egg white, 125 grams of sugar, and 30 grams of water. Aujourd'hui, si vous suivez bien les indications, you are sure to succeed. For today, if you follow my indication, you are sure to succeed. Like usual, we use the ring, we butter the ring generously, or you can have a ring higher, but you will have to put more cream in it, or you double the recipe, or you can use this. It is a fleury. Mon tour, ça c'est un tour. It's a wooden bench. The rollers are here to have an even height. We are just one. I'm using my ring to cut another guy to cut the door around. And we'll keep that door to make delicious cookies away from the kids. Almost there. Holding the pie dough in the middle of my ring. My thumb inside. I'm going deeper, second time. And now, going above the ring, follow the ring, stick to the ring, and I will cut the X using my rolling pin. Again, we save this for cookies for the grandchildren. And here we are. Important, preheat your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and make your short crust the day before. Page 41 of Do Your Best with a Plano. film goes inside and pouring in it the nuts and voila we are ready to bake the dough for 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, removing the tray from the oven that was at 350 degrees, the next step is to remove the nuts with a plastic wrap. So don't, don't be afraid, it's not warm. And we 
so if it causes attack. Next step, the glazing inside the tarts to make sure that the filling is not going to penetrate in the dough, so the dough will, will stay crispy. And no guarantee that the tart will be crispy. Back to the oven for five minutes. And here is my glaze. Five minutes later, it is adding a protection to that beautiful crispy dough. And we reserve it because I need I need room here to show you how to make that lemon curl. First, the gelatin. I hope you can see it in the camera. It has to be softened in melting in, in water with melting ice. So I'm going to warm the lemon juice. I'm going to stabilize my board. Should have done that sooner. Today, with my recipe, I added a zest of lemon. It's not in the book, but it's better this way in my syrup. Now mixing the syrup, the lemon syrup, with the eggs beaten with the sugar. Gently. Slowly. My cream, my lemon cream now is getting thicker. I'm going to check it last time for the temperature. 90 degrees, perfect. is to make the curd very smooth so I'm going to finish it with an electric blender. Here it is. 
Beautiful. You see how smooth and shiny it is. It smells good too. The last step, the meringue. Ah, before adding the meringue, I'm going to pour my lemon cream inside the tart. Gently. We let it cool. And while it's cooling, the gelatin will make it nice body. And I will receive, I will add the meringue in a minute. Italian meringue. The more fancy of all the meringues. Like the French too. Italian meringue is special. Bravo to the inventor of the Italian meringue. So, we have to melt the sugar in the water. And once that syrup, then I will add it to my egg white fluffy. The egg white in the mixer. is melting already. I have to keep that bowl in the center of my induction hooked up to the other side. For we'll which one then? So I'm starting to beat my egg white. I guide the push with my left hand, I press with my right hand, a little bit above the lemon cream. Caramelizing the top of it. Here we 
guests are going to, uh, to ask you, how did you do that? You have the look, you have the test, a beautiful meringue, Italian meringue tart. The lemon meringue tart, page 250 of Fête Votre Pastry and Dessert at Le Nôtre. Enjoy the show and have a good tasting. Au revoir. Thank you, Chef Le Notre. <clears throat> We're going to see if we have a few questions because I know I have some questions for you. I'm looking, I've been reading along with your recipe. So no. um, we yeah. first of all have a comment based on when your conversation with you about your grandparents that Jen loves French cider. And I'll start with my questions in hopes that maybe we can we can get some more questions um, in the chat because I'm seeing as, as people start to add them. I'm looking at your recipe, chef, on page 250 in your book, and you say that when you're making um, the lemon crémeux, to add two teaspoons of either yuzu or lime juice. Um, what do you prefer, and and why? Honestly, I never use a yuzu, but I've been told it's a even better taste than the traditional ordinary lemon juice. And then you had also mentioned, just so that when people are making notes in your cookbook, that to the at the with the lemon crème, so you grate the the um, it's it's not in the recipe, but you had mentioned during your demonstration that you grate um, lemon rind into the crème. Is that correct? Yes, it has to be done. Yes, I did not demonstrate that, but it. You said it out loud, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you have to grade it, yeah. All right, let's see if we have any other questions because I have yet another one. Now, this may not be a very intelligent question, but I'll do my best. Um, in preparing um, the crème. You 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 add um, four ounces of of diced butter. Um, do you prefer? Uh, dare I assume that it's unsalted versus salted? Um, which which is it for those of us that are neophytes to preparing this particular recipe? Well, it's a pastry show. It's unsalted. Always unsalted. Okay. I, I, again, for, for 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 I assumed unsalted, but for those for those who have not yet prepared this this beautiful tart, I just wanted to be sure. Um, and so I'm seeing a question from Ethan Tridwell that says that um, if I understand correctly, could you use a Swiss meringue? No, 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 no. The, the the best meringue for that recipe has to be the Italian meringue. It's it's more consistent. It's more dense. Uh, it's easier to flame uh, uh, with a torch. I insist, uh, Italian meringue is the meringue for that recipe. The next question is from Pill that she says, "I don't have a torch." In the oven, how long should I bake and at what temperature for the browning? Well, every oven is different. Uh, 350 degrees and not too close uh, from the resistance of the oven because uh, the coloration will come very fast, very, very fast. The torch is a better tool for that exercise. But you can you can do it in your oven definitely. The torch is also a lot more fun. Um, you said Genevieve is is asking um, chef. You said the whites are cooked before you burned. And I, I'm assuming she means before you torch them. How are they cooked? Oh, they, they are cooked when you do the the Italian meringue. 
the temperature of the caramel that you pour in the mixing bowl cook the egg white. So it, it, it's very safe. It's it's uh, for your health. It's, it's it's properly cooked. The eggs, the egg white, are properly cooked thanks to the temperature of the caramel. And the next one. Oh, sorry, excuse yeah, me. To be totally sure, um, the the caramel has to be at least at 110 degrees centigrade before you pour it in the egg white. And then Melissa is asking again, maybe another person who doesn't have a torch at hand, um, on hand, could you broil the tart? This is a second solution, yes, but, but you are you have you risk to broil your, your fingers with the torch. We cannot. <laughs> Don't take a chance by your torch. It's, it's cheap, it's easy to use. Many recipes can be done with that. And they're fun. Um, Melissa, do you see any other questions? I think that I think we've come to the end of our questions here, unless anyone who's on screen would like to 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 ask Chef Le Notre anything else about this fabulous recipe. I don't. Um, I have one more question. Chef Le Notre, if you haven't done all your grocery shopping and all you have is lemon juice in a bottle, would that be okay? Well, yeah, you are cheap, you know. Uh, <laughs> Those, those lemon are easy to buy. You can buy them everywhere. It tastes better uh, with the green. But yes, you could do only with uh, with lemon juice, or not even with no juice eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think Melissa, we're ready for we're ready for the. Um... one more question, Renee. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Beth would like to know if all of the curd should be covered by the meringue. Oh, well, you, you will definitely uh, have more more meringue than than, than the, the size of the tart, definitely. Yeah, but you can you can use it for something else. If you have leftover meringue, can you make little meringue cookies? Absolutely. Excellent idea. Mm. Eventually, uh, perfume with mocha or chocolate or just vanilla meringue. <laughs> so, Melissa, you think we're ready for the quiz? I, I think we are. I don't see any other questions right now. Okay. So here is the pâtisserie quiz from Chef Le Notre. You will see a photo of a French pâtisserie. There will be three questions to answer about each one. If you are the first person to correctly answer the three questions for that dessert by putting all three of your responses in the same chat comment, you will win a signed copy of French Pastries and Desserts, Desserts by Le Notre. Question number one, what is the name of this dessert? What is the origin of this dessert? And what is it made of? The clock is ticking. Okay, we'll give everybody about 30 seconds to put their responses in the chat. You have the answers there, yeah. yeah. Okay, five more seconds. Many answers. Yeah. 
So we have a number of answers, and I think Chef can see them also, but we needed answers to all three. Hang on, let's start at the beginning. Um, Jen says macaron, but that's the only thing that Jen said. Mrs. Klein says mac macaron. Bertrand says macaron, Italy almond. Excellent. Geneviève says macaron, Italy almond. And they're exactly at the same time of 4.34. Eric also at 4.34 says macaron, Italy, almonds. Jean says Italy and meringue. Caroline Gillet also at 4.34 says macaron, Hermès Paris, almond. We have somebody else who says macaron France, almonds. Andrew at 435 says macaron origin Italy, almond flour. Jen says almond. Sylvain says macaron France, almond flour. Karine says France. <laughs> Megan says macaron savory. <laughs> Cormary origin in the eighth century, flour and egg whites. Leslie says macaron, Italy, egg whites, almond. Mrs. Klein says macaron, Italy, egg whites and sugar vanilla. And Alan, who I think has been on every show of your Chef Le Notre with Jerry, says macaron, Italy, meringue, crème anglaise. And I think those are all of our answers. So, Melissa, I think we have one, two, three winners. Is that correct? At 434? That would be Bertrand, Geneviève, and Eric. What about Isabelle? Where's Isabelle? Did Isabel answer Isabel? So I think we have three winners and the rest were a little bit later. I, I trust the jury. Okay. So let's go on to the next question. Next, oh, next. Let's take a look at the official answer here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So the answer to question one, the name is Macaron on page 140 of the cookbook the book. Origin, the macaron is traditionally held to have been introduced in France by the Italian chef of Queen Catherine de Medici during the Renaissance. Taste, a meringue-based sandwich cookie made with almond flour, egg whites, confectioner's sugar, and food coloring. Common fillings include buttercream, ganache, and fruit-based jam. The meringues have smooth tops, ruffled edges, called the crown foot or pied, and flat bottoms. No. So congratulations to the three winners. I have a question for Chef Le Notre. Chef Le Notre, what is your favorite flavor of macaron? Uh, raspberry. And but when I... you make them, do you fill them with a, a buttercream or a raspberry jam? Raspberry jam mm. with a little bit of kirsch. Ooh. <laughs> are we ready for the next one, Renee? Yes, we are. Question number two. What is the name of this dessert? What is the origin of this dessert? And what is it made of? The timer's been set. Got about 15 seconds left. Okay, time's up. So here we go. 
Sylvie, Sylvain Cordier says, a charlotte, France, cuillé biscuit. We have Eric Vespierre who says Charlotte from Alsace and Brioche. SPL says Baba Orum, Pologne. Bravo. Alan and Jerry, Charlotte, Russia, strawberry. No. <laughs> um, and then we have somebody, SPL says cake. <laughs> Geneviève says Baba Orum, but that's it. Iris Haddad says Charlotte aux fraises, France, Chantilly, fraises, biscuits à la cuillère. No. <laughs> so I think we only have one winner here, Melissa. Am I correct? No, there are another one. That, there another one there? We have Baba Orum. Baba Orum, yeah. Yeah, we have one Baba Orum Pologne, and the other one just says Baba Orum, doesn't give more information. But by one, yes, but it's the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that we means have, we have two winners. Two winners. <laughs> no, the, the jury decides. <laughs> Sorry, not me. You decide, <laughs> Chef. <Not. laughs> no, I think that's correct. Are we ready for the the next one? Here we go. Uh -huh. The answer for number two. The name of the dessert is Baba Orum, or Rum Baba, and it's on page 152. The origin, believed to have originated in the early 19th century in the Polish city of Poznan, then part of Prussia. According to legend, the dessert was created by a chef named Stanislas Lesiecki, correct me if I'm wrong, who was the former king of Poland and the Duke of Lorraine. The story goes that the king was unhappy with the dry and bland traditional babka bread and asked his chef to come up with a more delicious version, which he certainly did. Yep. The chef's solution was to create a rich yeast dough that is soaked in a rum syrup after baking, which gave it a moist and flavorful texture. This new creation was named baba, which means old woman in Polish as the traditional babka bread resembles an old woman. The rum baba was quickly, quickly adopted by other European countries, particularly France and Italy, where it became a popular dessert. Taste. Today, rum baba is enjoyed in many different variations and flavors, but the basic recipe remains the same, a yeasted dough shaped into small cakes and soaked in a sweet rum syrup. Delicious. Question number three. What is the name of this dessert? What is the origin of this dessert? And what is it made of? Okay, time is up. So here are the responses. Hang on. Andrew says tiramisu, Italy, special pudding bread. Eric Vespierre, souffle, England, eggs. Leslie says souffle, France, eggs. Bertrand Pulquin says souffle, savoyard, oeuf en neige. Geneviève says un soufflé à la vanille. Iris says souffle, eggs. Sarah, I think that's her name, SPL phone, she mentioned it in the chat. Souffle, France, eggs, flour, and air. <laughs> <laughs> So how many winners do we have here, souffle?
Melissa, do you see that the just the last one, I think, souffle, France, eggs, flour, and hair. <laughs> <laughs> So I think we need some help from the professionals on this one, Chef Le Nôtre. Yeah, all the answers with the word souffle and egg are good answers. And the origin? Unknown. Unknown. <laughs> <laughs> So that means we have a number of different, we have a number of different winners. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we will mark the souffle. Anyone that says souffle. And, and, and souffle and eggs, I think that's Eric, Leslie, Bertrand, Iris, and Sarah. Sarah is the iPhone. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so let's look at the let's look at the the the, the chef Le Notre's answer to this question. So answer to number three. The name is souffle and it's on page 322. The origin. It was first described in 1742 by French cookbook author Menon in his Le Cuisinier Imperial, where it was called souffle, spelled with an E-T, which is the older spelling. It was a quite simple recipe composed of sugar, egg whites, and vanilla essence that was served as a dessert or even as a main dish when served with a meat ragu. The taste, the dessert is made from egg yolks, egg whites, and a variety of flavors, such as cheese, chocolate, or fruit. The dish is known for its light, airy texture and its ability to rise dramatically when baked in the oven. So a big thank you to everybody who answered in the in the the, the, the three questions in the quiz. Um, if we have any other questions for the chat, we'd love to hear some final questions for Chef Le Notre. Otherwise, we hope that everybody who has not already won based on the quiz will buy this extraordinary book, French Pastries and Desserts by Le Notre. Here is the information on where to buy it. And we hope that everybody has really enjoyed this series with Chef Le Notre, and we hope to welcome him again in the near future. But I think, I, Chef, I see so many faces on the screen right now of, of so many people who have been so loyal to your programming for AFUSA, and we are extremely grateful. Thank you. A big, big applause for Chef Le Notre. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Merci.